start here, Star Citizen. This is a new player guide as well as a tutorial for returning players looking to play the latest Star Citizen Alpha 3.9 update. Time skips are below, so you can find a specific topic if you need to. What is Star Citizen? Star Citizen is a hybrid FPS spaceship universe simulator MMO. Quite a lot of stuff to unpack there. It focuses on highly detailed environments, ships and characters. Currently the game is in its alpha phase and receives major updates every three months or so and players are encouraged to play, give feedback, bug hunt. That community support helps evolve and drive the project. What do you need to be able to play? You need to make an account, you can go to board gamer.co.uk forward slash enlist or use the link below that will take you to the account creation page and give you 5,000 bonus alpha we see the in-game currency feel free to change the referral code to user friends or use the one that automatically inputs when creating your account there's a couple of things to note your login id isn't seen by anyone else other than you it's just used to log on to the platform so treat it like another password your handle is your in-game name and your community moniker is the name that you will use on forums your handle and moniker can be the same but neither should be the same as your login id all you need to play star citizen is a 45 dollars game package with starter ship you can get almost everything else in game at the moment just by playing. I recommend getting a Mustang Alpha as your starting ship and if you want to spend a little bit extra and upgrade then look at a Avenger Titan which you can do at a later date. Some people might want to purchase Squadron 42 the single player campaign of Star Citizen at this stage too. Grab the download and install Star Citizen on an SSD if you can. That will dramatically reduce your initial load times. If you want to practice ship combat, then check out Arena Commander. If you want to practice FPS combat, then check out Star Marine. These are fast paced arcade modes. This tutorial is going to focus on the persistent universe though. So from the main menu, select universe, then create your character. You can edit this later. There are three choices of locations to start from. Under spaceports, you will have New Babbage, which is on Microtech, Area 18, which is on Arcorp, and Norville, which is on Hurston. Let's select New Babbage as it's the new zone in 3.9. Bam, let's go there. You'll spawn in a bed in a hab block. Get out of bed by moving or pressing Y. You can press Y to get out of chairs and beds and things like that. If you're locked to a panel or whatever, try using Y or just moving away from it. Uh, open the door by holding F and left clicking. This is how you interact with the objects and the world and panels. And you then want to go to the elevator and in the same way, you want to interact with the panels there. You can use mouse wheel as well to move through the panels options. When holding F, you'll notice objects that are nearby that can be interacted with will have an orange outline. And you can find almost any action you want in the personal inner thought menu. So this is bound by holding F and right clicking. This will bring up a radio menu, which will give you access to any action that you might want contextually, be whether you are on foot or in a ship uh, or whatever station you're using. Take off your helmet, quick switch your weapons, um, you can access food and harvestables in your inventory as well. It's all there, emotes, all that sort of jazz. You can also set hotkeys or favourite actions as well. When you are over an action that you wish to favourite or bind a key to, just right click on it in that menu. No need to faff around in the options menu. Bam. Now you know the basics of interaction. Let's go get a ship. We're going to follow the signs to the train station and the spaceport, the NBIS the new Babbage Interstellar Spaceport, or Intergalactic Spaceport, one of the two. You can use mouse wheel to change your movement speed and shift to run. When you are now at the spaceport, you are looking for a ASOP terminal. These are terminals that are on little stands and you'll be able to spawn your ship from them. Hold F and left click on the screen, select the ship that you want, and then click on the spawn button. These terminals can be used to reclaim your ship too if you ever lose it or it's destroyed or you just want to move it to another area. There is times associated with reclaiming your ship so you might have to wait a few minutes or you can pay a small expedited fee to get your ship quicker but hopefully you won't lose it immediately. The screen will show what pad or hangar your ship is on when it spawns. Remember that if you forget then you can go back to the terminal and look where your ship is. You can then use the lift to go to the hangar where your ship is supposed to be. Approach your ship and you want to look for where the door or the ladder for entry is. On single seat fighters, this is normally on the port or left side of the ship by the cockpit, though some ships have entry points and ramps that you can lower down and then get in that way. Again, hold F and left click on the highlighted area, and then you'll get a sort of like a selection of uh, potential actions that you can do. You want to enter your ship. Once you are in the pilot seat, you can flight ready your ship by pressing R, 
or interacting and finding the appropriate button. And then you'll want to request takeoff, press F1, open your Moby Glass, select comms at the bottom of your Moby Glass on the left. Uh, you can in fact select loads of different options there, but we'll come more onto the Moby Glass and what it can do a bit later. In the comms section, find the friends tab and then click on the appropriate air traffic control. In this case, it will be the NBIS, uh, the Embus uh, traffic control, and it should be at the top of your friends list. Wait a moment and then close your Moby Glass again with F1. This should then open the door or the roof based on what type of hangar you are in, and then you will be able to leave. Take off by gently pressing space to go up. Assuming that you have flight ready to your ship, you can then use control to go down, W to accelerate, S to reverse, A to strafe left, D right, mouse wheel will control your max speed. Your ship's HUD will give you a huge amount of useful information. On the left of the HUD, you will see what your max speed is uh, and what you've set it to and how fast you're going. Once you have left your hangar, and just edge out slowly for your first one. Doesn't need to be elegant, you just need to not explode. Fly clear of the hangar, don't ram people, don't be in their way, get a little bit higher, don't go to the ground yet. You don't try and um, land on buildings or anything. There's lots of things in the game that are considered crimes, uh, and you'll want to take a few seconds to get to grips with your ship. Shift is afterburner. Don't really want to use that at the moment, really, but it's there. Uh, Q and E will roll your ship. X is space brake and very useful. N will toggle your landing gear in and out. Obviously, it's down at the moment. C is cruise control and will attempt to maintain and get to the max speed that you set at the left of your ship HUD, which you can control with the mouse wheel. And you'll see a little arrow there indicating cruise control is on. If it's not there, then cruise control is not on. Landing zones like New Babbage are armistice zones so you don't have to worry about players being able to fire in there uh, or pull out weapons or anything like that either but with your max speed just be aware that if you are in the red section of the gauge that means you are above safe maneuvering speeds when you're actually going at that speed or above and you will have a hard time slowing down and you'll be more sluggish less agile you can use it to get somewhere fast and you should but Make sure that when you are near something or you're in combat, or whatever, that you um, move to the appropriate speeds and just be aware that the lower speed, that might be much more useful to you for maneuvering. F4, we will toggle the third person camera. Holding F4 and um, an arrow or page up or page down, um, the minus or plus keys will all perform different functions on the third person camera as well. So you can get some quite cool shots. Let's look at selecting a mission. In the future, you will want to be properly equipped for missions that you pick. But we're going to skip that stage and do something more starter mission-y. Missions are accessible from the Moby Glass Contracts Manager. So F1, look at the Contracts Manager, bottom right. The General tab there has lawful missions that are regularly updated. Personal tab might have less legal missions or ones that are more personalized for your current situation. They basically come through to you rather than being broadcasted across like a message board or a jobs board. You're going to want to avoid missions that are too hard for you and missions that you can't do. So if it's a delivery mission, probably can't do it because you haven't got any cargo space in your Mustang Alpha, at least for the type of crates it wants you to move around. It's probably worth doing bounty missions to start with because they will give you a good sort of feel of how to travel around the universe, but also give you a little bit of combat in a uh, much more enclosed environment where you're only fighting one or two ships at a time. Traveling to bounties can take you quite far out of the way though, so bear that in mind read where the mission is if it gives you any description of that see where the mission is when you've accepted it there's going to be some bounties that are much more proximate to you in the future after you've done the first bounty which will then give you access to a lot more quantum travel times can be quite long if you are moving between planets so bear that in mind and when you move to a new planetary system you're a single seater fighter you haven't got a huge amount of quantum fuel and you'll need to refuel your ship often there are space stations all over the verse that you can refill and rearm and repair at and we're looking at those in a minute but just bear in mind that you don't have infinite quantum fuel and when you get to a new planetary system like Hurston, like Microtech, like Crusader or Arc Corp it's worth having a look on your star map to sort of like look at the general area what are its moons called and then try and take missions and stay within that planetary system for as long as you can doing missions you want before moving on and then when you move over to a new planetary system do missions that are proximate to you again there until you have a larger ship anyway because it's just sensible to not be traveling constantly and read the descriptions of any mission that you take also anything over 5k 
5,000 Alpha UEC reward is probably not intended to be done with your starter ship as your first mission. You can see any accepted missions and change your current tracked one in the accepted tab as well. So go have a look, have a read, pick a mission, bam. To travel to your mission or to go anywhere else, I suppose, open the star map on your Moby Glass. You can then double left click to zoom in or double right click to zoom out or use the mouse wheel. Zoom out and find the mission marker of the mission that you've just accepted. Click and set destination. Close with F1. You will need to be above a certain altitude before you can quantum travel. So travel upwards and outwards of the atmosphere. Press B to spool your quantum drive, then align to the location that you wish to travel to. It should come up with a marker. You can actually also do this without a destination set in your star map, and it will give you lots of different choices of places to go, but this is much more sensible uh, and focused. The drive will then calibrate, and once spooled and calibrated, you can hold B to quantum travel, but you need to be, as I said, aligned. It will then charge up the drive and accelerate and then jump. You may have to make several quantum jumps based on where the location you are traveling is, if it's several million kilometers away, then potentially uh, look at getting a different mission because quantum fuel is limited and you are in a smaller ship. You may need to engage in combat during a mission or elsewhere in the verse. If you need to fight, press 3 to cycle through enemies. If you are hovering over a target, you can press 1 and that will um, target whatever is under your cursor. You can cycle fire modes by pressing R. Fixed weapons will point where your nose is pointing and pew pew. Manual gimbal will give you a range of movement, angular movement based on the turrets or um, if you've got gimbals on your ships, an auto gimbal will um, help auto aim for you. It's a light auto aim. It um, sort of takes a little while to um, actually aim at targets. You'll see two dotted lines in this mode. And I do recommend you use it. And when they converge those dotted lines, um, you basically are aimed at the enemy ship. And you'll want to aim at the pip drawn on or near the enemy ship that you've got targeted, because that's going to correct for your fire. Um, obviously, if you've got auto gimbal on, then try and aim towards that and the uh, the sort of like aiming system will do the rest for you. Left click fires weapon group one, right click weapon group two. With your starter ship, you should probably only have weapon group one. I recommend engaging below the red speeds or SCM speeds and firing within 1000 to 1500 meters to start with. Different weapons do have different ranges, but smaller weapons are typically meant to be used at dogfighting range. You can interact with your ship systems with the inner thought system or hotkeys um, or just generally interacting with holding F and choosing a particular button or MFD multifunction display to interact with. You can put more power to shields and you can overclock stuff and you can turn systems off. In larger ships, you will have other players manning your guns or managing systems if you wish. If you had missiles, you'd press middle mass to lock on and then hold that to fire. Um, H will cycle countermeasures for missiles and G will fire them. Try to keep moving while in combat and changing speeds, but also remember going into that red bar of speed, you will be more sluggish agility wise. Asteroids don't discriminate who crashes into them. Just be aware of that. Some people are great at constantly changing speeds and going really fast and going really slow and moving and rolling and all that sort of stuff, but constantly moving is a good idea. You can also scan for ships and signatures. Toggle scanning on by pressing tab, hovering over an object and then left clicking. That will scan more info on it. Or you can hold right click to charge up a ping and then release it. This will show a cube of sort of like signatures of where signatures have been detected. If you are looking for mineables, ships, or data probes, this will greatly help. You just go to that area and then you should start to passively detect where those things are. Obviously toggle it off when you're not using it. If you need to leave your ship, press Y, that will leave your chair, or um, you can find the interact and exit buttons if you wish, but you will also Typically, if it's in a single seat of fighter, come out of your cockpit as well. And if you're in space, that'll be EVA. But if you're not in space and in atmosphere or something, you could fall. Be aware of this. The FPS combat in game plays most like any other FPS sort of combat experience. One to three will switch weapons. You'll have a pistol to start with though, um, and nothing much else though. You can pick up enemy weapons or purchase other stuff from shops. T is flashlight, X is crawl, control is crouch, and um, zero pulls out your fists for melee. Tapping R will reload um, your weapon if you have a magazine. Holding R will holster your fists or your weapon. C will use a medipen. This is very important, which will also stop bleeding but heal you. And um, you'll need to re-equip a medipen after using one. Buy lots of medipens when you are in a store that sells them. Typically anywhere that sells um, first-person shooter gear. You'll want to buy a few magazines as well. 
for any weapons and new weapons um, and equip them once you've been to a store and that will also allow you to take on more involved missions because some missions are like sweep and clear and, and attack areas that are very um sort of like guard orientated lots of um fps ai running around you can fly around in the eva when not in gravity but you may want to orientate yourself before entering an area with gravity or you'll collapse to the floor for a while or even take damage and die if you do die for any reason and you will a lot in star citizen then you will respawn in the last major location you visited or in an icu bed or prison if you were naughty actually but you can set your icu spawn points or like your temporary spawn point on certain ships medibeds if you are have access to a cutlass red an 890 jump or carrack you can use one of the medibeds there bam you will respawn there if you die if your ship is lost or destroyed or you just want to move it to your current location you will need to reclaim it from one of those asop terminals that you saw at the spaceport this can take a few minutes and you can choose to pay an expedited fee if you want to have it quicker Good practice is to reclaim your ships just before you log off for the night, in my opinion. When you log back on, you will spawn at the last major location you were in or at a bed if you logged off in a bed using the log off function. So some ships have beds. At any time, if you're stuck and on foot, you can hold backspace to respawn or use the personal inner thought system. Bam, you respawn. It's worth doing if you're stuck or having a really bad time. If, if you are in the main seat of a ship and holding a backspace will set self-destruct instead. So bear that in mind. Um, obviously the ship exploding will take you out as well, but you will lose that ship. After completing a mission, it's worth stopping off at a landing zone or uh, a spaceport or a space station or whatever, um, because you might want to refuel, repair or rearm or buy some new gear. You can go to places like Port Tressler which is the space station above Microtech, but you'll find that lots of planets have space stations above them, and there are lots of other space stations in the verse that you can explore and purchase items at. You can set these locations as destinations like you did on the star map for your mission, and then actually uh, quantum travel there. Once you're approaching that landing zone though, you will need to request a landing in the same way that you requested takeoff. So go into your Moby glass, bam, um, and then select in friends menu the appropriate air traffic control uh, and then it will mark a landing pad for you or landing hangar for you with a circle and sort of spanner symbol when you're close press n to toggle your landing gear down you can then either manually land or when you're really close to the landing area which will be shown as like a little square um, you can then hold n and it will auto land you or should auto land you um, sort of like, it, it, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Just you can land manually. You'll feel great. Once landed, you can make use of the stations or landing zone services to maintain, rearm and repair your ship. Open up the mobile glass, click on the vehicle services, the upside down spanner, and then uh, make sure that you uh, select all the services you want. Quantum fuel is limited. Make sure you refuel from time to time. And there are lots and lots of space stations between sort of like planetary systems. You've only got the Stanton system in game at the moment, but the distances between the planets in the Stanton system are quite vast and you might need to refuel your ship. Um, missions are typically um, given to you in the area of your sort of like operation for the most part, not entirely. Some will take you to Grimhex and other places around the verse. Uh, so bear that in mind. Always read a mission. At landing zones and stations, it's worth having a little bit of an explore around them because you will find food courts, but also shops, which you can use to outfit your character and ships. You'll need to customize a ship after you've purchased those items before you spawn it on the ASOP terminals. So um, you can go into your Moby Glass, the vehicle loadout manager there, and then appropriately attach any equipment or weapons or whatever you want to your ship, as long as it can fit it. You can also see the different sizes of fittings and what size of item in any given port or area your ship can take. And obviously use this, have a look, work out what size of systems you want to get before you buy them. I would recommend to start with, if you've got your Mustang Alpha still, you can fit an additional weapon to each of its wings. So I recommend grabbing two size one very puck gimbals, which then allow you to put a size one weapon on, and then that will allow you to fire all of your weapons on your ship with manual or auto gimbals based on your preference. You can rent or buy ships from various locations in the verse as well, all in game. 
Ship rentals can be found near starports on planets. They are more affordable, limited time ships that can't be modified though, so you can't change their loadouts. Ships can also be bought from various stores in-game. New Deal at Lawville on Hurston, Astro Armada at Area 18 on Arc Corp, and Teach's Ship Shop at Levski on Delamar. Bought ships will persist on your account, and progress may carry over to other major patches in the future. So we might see 3.9's progress, persist into 4.0. It is dependent on a few things and Cloud Imperium did say that they will still occasionally wipe everything when they have like database updates and that sort of stuff and we're going to see wipes in the future but there's a good chance that progress will persist between these patches now. Character loadout. So you can change what your character has equipped by purchasing gear from various vendors around the verse as well and using the Moby Glass equipment manager to select what you want on your character. A flight suit and helmet are recommended. Taking your undersuit off though will give you access to change your clothing, but without a helmet on, you might suffocate very quickly in space or areas with no oxygen. It is very much worth picking up a load of many pens, but also a few uh, FPS weapons and magazines for them. There are survival mechanics too. Temperature, nutrition, hydration are all important, as are obviously oxygen. You can buy or find food and drink at stores and food courts. And if you've got enough room in your inventory, you can actually stow them as well. Not all items, but a lot of those food items. And that's gonna be based on your armor. Some armor has backpacks attached to it. So I would recommend grabbing something like a Novikov suit of armor. And armor is rated to different thermals. This will be mainly applicable on the icy surfaces of Microtech and its moons, and the extremely hot Daymar, and a few other places in the verse. The Novikov um, armor is rated for very, very, very cold conditions, which is great if you're near New Babbage and Microtech and its moons, which is hopefully where you started. Your ship and structures are refuges for refilling your oxygen and protecting you from the elements as well. So sort of bear that in mind. Eat and drink every couple of hours when you return to landing zones and stations as food is mega cheap. You will need to take off your helmet when you eat. Make sure you put it back on afterwards or at least when you go out um, airlocks and things. There are buffs and debuffs associated with food and drink and you can see your status by pressing F and right clicking and at the bottom left you can see your hydration, nutrition, heart rate, environmental temperature, body temperature, remaining oxygen, all that sort of stuff. Also, if you are in danger of dying, you will have a HUD warning, typically saying the life expectancy, what it currently is for you, like three minutes, two minutes, one minute, 10 minutes, all that sort of stuff. And that's gonna be based on your oxygen and your temperature. There are useful items and harvestables that you can find around the verse as well. And if you've got space, you can pick them up and store them. Some of them can be sold at uh, terminals and some can be equipped, some can be eaten. Grab food items from your personal inventory in the interaction menu there. You can also uh, do pretty much anything else you need to through that menu as I keep on saying. There is a lot of exploration to be done as well. There's caves, planets, moons, outposts, space stations, derelicts. There are Easter eggs and cool bits to find. Well, that's the basics, but there's quite a lot more in the game and more that you can do. There are lots of other different mission types, delivery missions, assassination, assault, um, scan and clear, patrol, disposal, smuggling. Some require you to team up, board ships, do investigations. Uh, you may meet some mission givers. Typically, they will send you invites to your personal missions and then give you some interesting uh, missions to do. Missions can lead to different variations and potentially more difficult missions and chains. You may need specific types of ships to do certain missions like cargo, space for delivery ones, but it's worth equipping yourself with armor and weapons as well as upgrading your ship and purchasing new ships or renting new ships based on the missions that you want to be doing. There are a load of outlaw missions and missions that will get generated when players do certain actions or take missions and counter missions. You will get a criminal rating or get fines when you do anything illegal. And you can see what's illegal in any given area by looking at the Moby Glass and your journal there. It will show your jurisdiction that you're in and explain the laws in quite a lot of detail. If you have your heart set on being an outlaw in the game, you're probably gonna wanna spend a lot of your time around Grim Hex. They don't mind if you're a criminal and you can use their facilities um, to repair, rearm your ship and, and purchase a load of gear there as well. If you get fines for lesser crimes or smuggling or something, then you can pay these off at fine kiosks, which you can find around landing zones. Also, crimes do need to be detected by comrades to count as um, actually a crime being committed. So if these are turned off or not operating, then bam, uh, you're not going to have your crimes detected and other people aren't going to have their crimes detected. 
on the star map, you can see these comrades. They cover quite a small area and you can actually get missions to take them down or just visit them yourself. If you buy a crypto key, which you can purchase at various stores, you can then use that crypto key um, to disable the Comoray. If you commit certain crimes and then you are killed, you may end up in prison where you can see your sentence time left in the central kiosk there and just go to the prisoner processing when your time is up. You can speed this up by mining or you can try and escape as well. So um, you do you. Do you. Uh, crypto keys will need to be used at security depots like Security Post Korea if you want to hack down your criminal rating or remove crimes from your record. If you have escaped from prison, you will need to do that before you can start playing the game properly again because you won't have access to your inventory as sort of the prison gameplay loop and the manhunting because players will be after you and lots of these areas are also protected by guards and turrets so bear that in mind. PvP is very much in Star Citizen. Players will get criminal ratings if they are detected doing PvP and attacking um, ships that they shouldn't be. If the ship is red on your HUD, that typically means they're a criminal or at least more fair game for you to engage um, without you having to worry or maybe you should worry and try and disengage, I suppose. Green means non-hostile, probably. Bounty hunting missions can be for NPCs but also players and there is escaped prisoner missions for bounty hunting as well. Trading! If your ship has some cargo space, you can buy and sell commodities. A lot of players just do this um, and they get big, big um, ships for trade. You need an appropriate ship to be able to do it. Obviously, you can do the delivery missions as well if you've even got a small amount of cargo space, but huge ships, huge haulers like the Caterpillar, for example. Um, lots of players will um, just haul all day and all night. Mining! You can mine by hand if you purchase a mining multi-tool and an ore attachment and then equip them. You'll also want armor or undersuit with a backpack, uh, which you can purchase in various shops along with the multi-tool. You can then bring this out after equipping it by pressing 4, and then you can mine rocks with that. Right click to scan them, left click to start mining, and then you want to adjust the power of your beam with the mouse wheel. You'll want to keep it in the green zone, and you'll be able to pick up gems that are dropped from those sort of like mineable nodes. You'll notice like a little streak of ore in little tiny rocks uh, for this. If you go into the red zone uh, of a rock's power limit, um, for too long, they might explode. Well, they will explode. Uh, sell your mineables at refinery kiosks that you can find at some stations and landing zones. On the larger scale of things, uh, the prospector and mole are mining ships. It's the same sort of technique as hand mining as well for them. You can scan rocks with tab and then do the scanning that we talked about earlier. Then you can see those mineables on your HUD if they're nearby. You can go up to them uh, and then press M, go into mining mode, just looking at the rock that you want to um, sort of scan will start scanning it and tell you what its makeup is. You'll have to work out whether you want to mine it or not and then left click, beam comes out and you will adjust the power I'm trying to get it into the green zone um, with the mouse wheel. When it's broken into small enough parts, you can toggle the extraction mode by pressing right mouse button. That will go from mining to extraction mode uh, and then nom up that rock. Spontanium is the new valuable but highly volatile mineable that needs to be taken to refineries quickly and safely. If you start mining spontanium, bear that in mind. It can explode based on you getting uh, rocked or shot or um, how long you take to um, get it to a refinery. There is various mining equipment as well that will allow you to more easily fracture different rocks. Larger mass rocks may very well require multiple people to mine them together or for you to at least upgrade your mining laser in some way. Getting more involved. So Star Citizen is best played in a group. You can form a party in game or in the menu. When a party leader joins an instance, you can choose to load in with them if you wish. You can also join friends that are already in game just by right clicking on them and join game. You might have to travel to them when you're in game though, that you will spawn wherever you are supposed to spawn. You won't spawn next to them unless they are already next to you. Uh, you can invite players to group straight from in game as well by interacting with them and then inviting them there or adding them as friends or even from the comms panel as well uh, or even the website adding a friend can be done in game or the website player handles are their names bear that in mind you can also share missions with groups by going to the mission in accepted and then clicking share star citizen is very much still an alpha and if you find or experience a bug and you will at some point you can start or more commonly add to an existing bug report on the rsi website's issue council very useful to do that you can also see workarounds and things like that on support.robertspaceindustries.com very, very, very useful resource set there. Getting involved with the community and feedback. There are lots of other opportunities to have your say on the Spectrum forums, asking questions, participating in AMAs. Um, joining an organization is something you should really consider if you enjoy Star Citizen because the game is best played with a group. Um, these are player guilds or groups 
that will suit a variety of different players' needs. And there's thousands and thousands of them, so you will be able to find one that is perfect for you. It gives you people to play with in-game and at least organise some cool stuff to do in-game. And Star Citizen does very well with organised sort of like uh, events and plans and that sort of stuff. Very sandboxy in a lot of its elements. You can browse through the list of orgs and contact them via the RSI website too in the orgs section there. I also have an organisation spotlight where I've gone through a load of other orgs previously and I will keep on adding to that. So you can check out some of those orgs that I've um, covered in videos, which I'll link down below. Don't be afraid to ask someone in chat to in-game something or look it up on a YouTube video. Star Citizen is not a very hand-holdy experience. Asking other players for tips and help is the way to go, though. General tips, if you are in doubt, hold F and right-click to use the inner thought system. That will give you access to most of the options you need in any given situation. Are flight-ready ships very, very useful? Why gets out of chairs, stations, beds, cockpits, all that sort of stuff as well? Holding backspace respawns you. I have a huge amount of videos covering all elements of Star Citizen. It is the focus of my channel, and I will continue to do the news and tutorials and guides and all that sort of jazz. So please check out the rest of the videos on my channel for anything that you could want Star Citizen-wise. Ooh. Every month we have a giveaway for May we're giving away a Star Citizen game package with Arrow Light Fighter. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details below. I am a shill for a couple of companies, NordVPN and NordPass. If you are looking for a VPN or a password management system, I recommend you check them out. They've got many benefits over free services, and as I'm pretty security conscious, uh, I love those kind of services. Also, there's Shadow. If you are thinking about getting a new gaming rig or upgrading your gaming PC or Star Citizen or whatever, then consider Shadow instead. It is an internet cloud-based subscription service like Stadia, like G force now but this one gives you access to a full windows 10 environment which is fully customizable and that is significantly better in my opinion allowing you to do a lot more with it check out the links below for them or use the code board gamer for discount also if you wish to support the channel further there is patreon there's the youtube join member button down below that really helps this is a community supported channel and i wouldn't be able to do what i do without the support that i get if you want to share these videos if you want to comment give feedback whatever that is also in hugely appreciated thanks very much for watching guys you take care and i'll see you in the verse